So good morning, everybody. Let me share my screen here. This somehow stopped working. Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome back to the Cheese Advanced Training School on HPC for Computational Seismology. Um, the plan for today is uh, mainly two sessions, uh, two code sessions. In the morning, we will look at the uh, seismal code and do exercises with that. Then we will have a lunch break. And after the lunch break, we will start with a few lightning talks. And uh, after that, we will do the code SpecFem 3D have with exercises as well. And that's from my side. If there's no questions from the audience, then I would actually write, start right away. Is there any questions from you? No questions, then I suppose Alice is going to present. Uh, go go take the lead. No, uh, okay. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I will share my screen and start. Bo, please turn on your video. We can't see you. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we need to. Yeah, so you can see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, I will start. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, so <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Yeah, welcome to the CESO training. And the CESO is one of the flagship code in the CHIS project, which is stands for the Center of Excellence for Exascale in Solid Arts. So here are a list of the, the trainers today. And Anis, she already gave you some introduction about the CESO. If you want to find more information, you can go to our website or go to then the GitHub, the repository. So today we will work together with you to do then the CISO exercises. Mm -hmm. Why cannot move to next slide? Okay. Yeah, so today we will cover three applications. The first one is then the kinematic uh, source model. We will use then the 1994, the rich earth, lost rich earthquake as an example. So you will start with a standard rupture format where you have all the ruptures pre-described. Then we will run our elastic model. So you will see how the elastic wave propagation and then see how the quantum motions moves. Okay, so the second one is a 3D dipping fault with dynamic rupture. This one we will use and implemented as the plasticity. So you can also see that how then the off-fault plastic deformations. We will use then the scale benchmark TPV13 as an example. So for that, you can find more information about the benchmark in this link. The last one, we will use our complex dynamic rupture model of our earthquake that has happened in 2018, the Palu Sulawesi earthquake. This earthquake is interesting because it's also generated the super shear rupture. Also, you have then a strong tsunami coupled. So before me, we move on, I first want to make sure, okay, we are going to set up the Docker so you can make sure you can use it during the trainings. So why we use Docker? Because okay, in that case, we can pre-install some tools inside. So you can use it directly. You don't need to use it and install it anymore. So today we are going to use three tools in the Docker. One is Archive, where you can use it to generate then the kinematic source files. Then we will use the Gmesh and Pumpkin to generate the mesh files for, for you to our simulations. I think before we send an uh, email asking you to install then the Docker, so I hopefully you already done it. And so, yeah, if you already installed Docker, so now we need to set up the environment. So, so in that case, please open our terminal window yeah, in your com local computer. So for Windows, that is uh, better to use under the PowerShell. So it doesn't matter whether you are using Linux or Mac or whether you are win use Windows. Oh, sorry. You just run the same command, then it will okay, pull, out the, pull out the Docker container to your local machine so you can access the tools. 
Could we have a quick yes that everybody stop? Uh, Bo, can you pause? Can we have a quick yes that everybody has the Docker in um in the participant list? Could you click yes if it um if it's all set up? We go back one slide, Bo, please. I would also like to ask you to to execute that command right now, because it takes some time to download, or might take a few minutes. But that's the same we were asked to download on Monday or Tuesday or something, right? You didn't yes. change anything. Yes, yet? that's the same. Mm. Okay, good. So if I did it then, then it's fine. Mm. Okay. Then... Yes. Yeah, so so... I don't see no. Oh, please go back. I, I, I don't see a lot of yes. I think we have to get more yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't say yes or no. We're in the participant list. You can see who's uh, having a. Um, you have 25 yes only. Oh, so because far. now I'm in the screen sharing, so I need to fix. 29, 30, 31. Um, if it doesn't work or you have problems, please hit no. So we um we know that uh, you might need some advice later. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. And zero knows. So I guess everybody's just still doing it. Let's wait one more minute. Thirty-eight. Maybe um, we can quickly summarize again what's in this Docker, Carsten, would you like to? Uh, do you want to do it now? Because we have slides after, you know. Okay. Ah, okay. There's one no from Connor. Oh, we have one no. Would you like to say, um, tell us what the problem is, Connor? I uh, might have missed the first two slides. Yes, Bo, could you go back, please, and where you can get the Docker? And Nico, you have to click yes also. No, no, we don't have the link to download. Yeah. Yeah. I think progress in the email that we provide the link to download this Docker installed. Yeah, I did that. Okay, so here okay. you just need to open our terminals and run this command. Just gives a uh, permission denied. I, I put the download link in the chat if someone needs. Are you on Linux? Maybe you need uh, to add the uh, sudo to the command. Yeah, that's it. Okay, good. Yeah. So should I move Perfect. on? Um, anybody else having trouble? Or do you, I guess the other ones that didn't tick yes, they may be still making coffee. <laughs> yeah. Then, wait, well, if you don't have to rush for, it's important that everybody has that running. Yeah, I think because we will ask them again later, so yeah. <laughs> okay, so we can go on for now, 43, okay. If there's a problem, we, we will have three breakout sessions, actually. So there's lots of opportunity to. Oh, uh, three? Things. Oh, two. Let's see. <laughs> OK, yeah. So today, for today's training, we will also use breakout rooms. So at the beginning, each, before each example, we will have an introduction in the main room. We will tell you what's the required input files we need to run SESO. And we will go through them as the input files to tell you what does the parameters we put there mean. Then we will go to the breakout rooms. Then you will also, yeah, prepare your meshes and prepare then the uh, source files for the kinematic model. Then you will copy it back to the cluster, then submit the jobs. After the job is done, we will copy it back to the local machine. Then we will go back to the main room and we'll show you how to use the power view to look at the result and do some filters. So yeah, just in case, 
uh, if you didn't finish then the job in time. So here we also used our backup plan. So you can, we put all the outputs there in the Google Drive folder so you can download it. And or we also put something in the cluster. You can go to this directory then to copy it. Yeah, so the first example, it will be our kinematic uh, model. Then for the magnitude 6.7 loss ridge earthquakes, uh, this earthquake happened on a bland thrusting fault, which is not mapped before. So here is a map view showing that the historic, historic earthquake and major uh, faults in Southern California. The loss ridge earthquake is here. And we also have a 3D view, so you can see that how the ruptures on the fault and the uh, ground motions on the surface. We, you will see this result in your simulation later. Okay, so we will have also then second one is our dynamic, the dynamic simulation for the benchmark TPV 13. Uh, the benchmark is then the SCIC and the USGS the credit. So you can, for people to verify different codes and softwares for dynamic rupture simulations. And today we are going to use this, here is our map showing how the geometry looks like. You have a 16 degree dipping fault and our rupture will be created in this three by three kilometer area. And uh, the figure in the right, is just shows that how the CELSO code that matches with all other dynamic simulation codes. Uh, the last, uh, the third one is that, uh, yeah, the natural earthquake happened in 2018, magnitude 7.5 part earthquakes. And here, the figure here shows that the back projection result, you can see how the rupture propagating from the hypocenter then the star marked, then to the south. This earthquake ruptured then our left natural faulting, then uh, ruptured several collecting the fault segments. And there's all really strong tsunami coupled and so many more than 4,000 people died in this earthquake. So you will, we will run the simulation and you will see how these super shear ruptures. So when you run this after the simulation, you will copy all the results so to your local machines, and we will show you how, what's the, what's the result I calculated. So there are time series. So we put the receivers on the fault or on the surface. So you can look at how that uh, ground shaking, the seismograms looks like. Then we also have the 2D output, that is the ruptures on the fault and the free surface ground motions. Then we also have then a 3D output, then how they will feel propagate in the 3D and the string or the plastic string. So then, yeah, we will all look at the result using Power View, and we also show you how to some simple filters to do the post processing. Yeah, so, yeah, so please make sure that everyone that the Docker works, then I will hand over to Cousin, then he can explain more about the Docker. Cousin, hmm. I guess. Yeah. Um... Okay, so uh, I hope this worked out of you and you have uh, Docker installed. Uh, did you have to download the image in the meantime? Could I get a, a quick yes whether that, whether that was the case? Yes, again, one low from class B. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so when I uh, put the, the comment Docker pull, blah, 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 so I got an uh, access the error response, uh, deny requested access to the resources denied. Uh, which operating system? Uh, Linux, Ubuntu. Yeah, then please put a sudo in front of the uh, of Docker. Uh, okay. Yeah. So this is something maybe I should explain. So uh, you for for Docker to use, you need to be either part of the Docker group on Linux, or you need to to add the sudo command. So that's uh, yeah. So so whenever we write Docker and you need the sudo, just put it in front of there. No, I still get the same error. Okay. Uh, yeah, then we need to fix that later in the breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, otherwise I see a lot of yes. So uh, please go to the next slide. 
Um, yeah, so for those of you who, for, for those that runs already, um, so this is a quick example how you can use it now. So basically, um, we, you can use Docker more or less as a, as a command line tool. So with Docker run, you use, uh, with Docker run up of CSSL training, you say, okay, I want to run the container that you have just downloaded. And now at the end, you can um, actually append a command for, with which you can execute a program. Um, so this is something you can try out. Um, so if you if you enter this command with gmesh minus version, you should you should see 4.6.0, which is the version of gmesh that is installed. Um, and if if you see 4.6.0 printed, then everything should should be fine. Um, yeah. So maybe maybe give me a quick yes whether that works for you. Okay, 32 yeses, 33, so that looks very good. Um, then uh, please go to, to the next slide. Um, so yeah, you don't need to enter this command right away. Um, we'll, I will introduce a shortcut uh, in a minute. Um, just one thing, uh, which is a very technical detail, which I don't want to um, go into much detail, but uh, what we need to do is, um, we need to kind of share, uh, tell Docker where to find files that we are going to pass. So if we, we are later going to pass some um, a file to Gmesh, which it shall use to, to generate a mesh. Um, and in order to um, in order to, to let Docker find these files, we need this minus V command, which maps the current directory in which you are in, in your terminal, which maps that to inside the Docker container. Um, and the, the minus U um, flag is there to, to fix the permissions on Linux such that the files that created have the, the, right, the right permissions. So you don't need to, to copy that right now because we are going to, to introduce a shortcut in, in just a minute. Um, yeah, so, and if you are on Windows, then uh, the command is a little bit different. So uh, you, you um, instead of the, the brackets, the, the angular brackets, you have these curly brackets for PVD. Um, and you, it is also going to ask you whether you want to share files, and you just need to click on and share it. Okay, go on, please. So, um, yeah, so this command is quite long. So uh, what we did is we uh, created a, a, a training repository. Um, so please um, uh, download uh, this link. Um, we also shared the slides within the within the chat, so you can also um, open the slides yourself and. Um, Click, click, uh, click directly. Click, click on the link from the slides, um, and I would uh, ask you to to please download um, uh, download the the zip um, download the, the zip um, container and extract it. And in there, you find a, a file called training.sh, and this training.sh is going to wrap that that complicated Docker command that I've shown uh, two slides ago. Um, yeah, so on Linux, you can just um, you can just uh, say dot slash training uh, dot sh and gmas minus version. Uh, on Windows, it's unfortunately not that comfortable. So on Windows, please use a bit, uh, use the, the longer command that I've, that I've put there below. Um, yeah, and uh, just, just a quick hint. So whenever you have these long commands and then you need to type them um, all the time, which is very cumbersome. So uh, there's a small trick which you might know already. Um, or might not know. Um, so if you just uh, enter Control R into your into your history, so into your terminal, then um, what you're going to see is a small window where you can start typing. And if you then start uh, type Docker, type to, uh, start typing Docker, for example, then it's going to search all of the last commands that you entered, and it's going to find the last command that that started with Docker. So it's a very easy way to repeat uh, previous commands. And if you hit uh, Control R a second time after searching, then you can actually cycle through the different commands that you entered. And uh, yeah, the same thing also works in PowerShell on, on Windows. So please go on. Excuse me, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I tried to clone the Git repository and giving the whole path is not working. So I give it until training and it worked, but I don't find the, 
the directory archive or the main .zip after cloning. Uh, so the link does not work. If I copy the whole until main .zip, no. I have to clone the directory training, and inside training, I don't see the main zip. Uh, yeah, if you clone the repository, then that's the same. So it's just the, the link is just the repository in a zip, not not more. Okay. So you can also just git clone the repository if you're more comf comfortable with that. Okay. Thanks. Uh, hi, uh, I get this unknown command when I try to run the training dos, dot h sh. I think you need to 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 change to the so you need to unzip the uh, the zip. Yeah, file. no, I'm I'm I I copied the uh, content of the zip file into a folder. I went to the folder and uh, tried to run it, and this is what I get. Ah, okay. Um, yeah. So. Uh, the reason why you get this is that uh, you did not uh, add any command that you run. Ah, so GM, uh, okay, okay. So if you say uh, training dot is a gmesh, then yeah. you then this should work. So unknown command means the uh, so you can I can run gmesh, rcon, and pungent and sysol. So those are like four commands that you have, um, and you need to choose one of them. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I have a problem with the uh, slide number thirteen for the windows uh, where we need to the docker setup yes uh, so it the pvd should be the uh, my like home directory or the chosen one yes it's the current it's the current working directory so you kind of you, you should see on the left side you should see a path on, on your terminal window like c uh, colon and then some path and this is the current directory you're in and this is going to be the same as p p w d and for windows you should work in powershell to make sure that it works okay because i have an error like the response from the daemon uh, invalid Oh, you need to um, you need to run you need to start Docker first. So on Windows, um, Docker is going to st start a very small virtual machine, and you need to you need to run that before you can execute that command. So you you should have downloaded this Docker desktop, and if you go to your to your start menu, there should be like a Docker um, thing which you need to start first. Yeah, I think it's already running. Uh, Which terminal are you using? Are you using terminal or are you using PowerShell? PowerShell. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Um, maybe could you post the, cause the screenshot, a screenshot or something like that in, in, in Slack? Um, I think we should, we should continue because we also have some time. We, we have planned some time later on to fix some of these issues. So in the in the breakout rooms, you have a very long first session, and then we can um, work uh, work on that. Okay. And uh, by the way, uh, so so if if Docker does not work, and um, we have provided the backup for everything, so it's an unfortunate that you cannot participate with that. But um, we, we also have a, like a a backup solution if we may move on to the cluster later on. Okay, then I think I hand over to, to Bo, right? Yeah, okay, so I will stop sharing, then Thomas will start the example one. Okay, so can you see my screen? And can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, so the first example that we will uh, uh, see is a, um, a kinetic ruptor model that we will um, uh, put into SaySol and then we will uh, try to uh, generate some ground motion. So, uh, a kinetic, um, yeah, uh, what is a kinetic ruptor model? So, um, uh, it's uh, just, um, uh, so we will uh, try to model an earthquake, but uh, 
the earthquake would be uh, predefined. That's uh, we are not uh, using a um, dynamic rupture boundary as we will do in the next two example, but uh, we uh, model the, uh, the earthquake uh, finite source uh, uh, using a set of point source. Uh, each of them would be described by a moment tensor and a source time function. So then it's a set of a lot of moment tensor with a source time function that is, the source time function is uh, our uh, slip um, uh, at the point uh, evolved with time. So this kind of kinematic models are uh, uh, often derived uh, from an inverse problem, like using seismic or geodetic data. And uh, today, so we'll try to model um, the Northridge earthquake. Uh, so the, the model is from Artsel et al. 1996. And uh, so we use this model because it's a, a kind of an example on the SCAP web, web page of this uh, standard structure format that I will describe later on. Um, so the fault is uh, uh, 20 by 25 kilometers, it's planar fault and it's dipping 40 degree. And uh, so we kind of uh, smoothed um, and uh, kind of resampled temporally and spatially uh, the, the example source by uh, adding much more point source and uh, finer time steps. So you can see uh, how this uh, source looks like on the right. Uh, so you can see that, uh, yeah, that's a final slip and there's a kind of a very heterogeneous uh, slip. So, uh, and this example uh, will allow us to uh, present uh, the parameter five uh, of uh, SESOL. And um, so we, we use this example because it's also uh, more easy uh, to, to, to parameterize and uh, dynamic rupture source as much less parameters and then we'll be able to uh, first uh, see this, these parameters. So um, the parameter files of uh, SESOL um, are composed of a main parameter file uh, that we call usually uh, parameters.par uh, which will define uh, the um, uh, input files and the output files, uh, what kind of output we want to um, to generate at which uh, special and temporal uh, um, frequency. Uh, and this will also define some global uh, simulation parameters, like for instance, do we want uh, local to enable local time stepping or uh, I don't know, other parameters. Um, and then uh, this uh, parameter files also uh, links to some um, other uh, YAML file, which will uh, specify the spatial variation of um, some of the input, input parameters. So uh, this uh, YAML file, they are read by the um, uh, easy library, which has been developed by Gaston. And uh, yeah, basically, um, it's um, easy, it's composed of different components called maps and filter. A filter for uh, can um, specify a um, kind, kind of a filter part of the domain uh, and then uh, define uh, on this uh, part of the domain the parameters and a map will just transform the coordinate to, uh, um, well, a map is kind of a function, let's say. And uh, yeah, the main advantage of this uh, easy library is that uh, we don't need any more to have uh, to uh, specify the parameter setup um, um, inside the code. So then we don't have to, like everybody who runs the SESOL do not need to have their own branch. And uh, so then everybody has the same executable and the code just reads the parameters and uh, this favor the possibility and it, this is highly flexible. So uh, this might be, uh, this might look like a very formal description. So I just put an example uh, here. So um, yeah, this is an example of this YAML file. And in this example, we define uh, the density and the uh, LAME parameters. And um, you can see that there's um, different component like a group filter and a function map. And um, so, um, the group filter, for instance, will uh, say that um, um, in the volume region six, seven, and eight, we want to define uh, the row, mu, and lambda. 
And uh, so we can define them with a constant value and this has a constant value. And outside these uh, three uh, groups, um, we, uh, def we define Romeo lambda as a function of the y coordinate. So using a function. So these functions, they, are, uh, they don't need to be compiled. They are just a, a kind of a process on the fly by say so. So that's a big advantage of uh, easy. Okay, so now um, we will uh, have a look at the parameter file, the main parameter file. Uh, so uh, this parameters file uh, is read by a Fortran routine. So it's based on the um, Fortran name leaks uh, con convention. So a name list uh, is a kind of a block of uh, parameters um, with uh, different parameters in it. And you see that uh, in these parameters, there's a various name list uh, grouped by, uh, um, by, um, by different concept. And for instance, there's a block equation which will define all uh, the um, material properties if we enable or not plasticity, for instance, or where do we, um, or the material, um, the, the file which define uh, the uh, volume parameters. Um, then there's a boundary name, name list, for instance, which enable or not a different uh, boundary condition. But uh, so in this uh, example, uh, we, we will have a, a source, um, a kinematic source that we define uh, here. So we, we have to set up the, the file, the name of this, this file here. And uh, then we have to um, set up also the, the mesh that we use. So we use a Say so I'll use a HDF5 unstructured titular meshes. So we have to define the, the mesh here, the, the mesh name. And then there's a name list with different uh, global um, uh, parameterization of, uh, of the run. For instance, uh, the CFL number that we use, uh, which um, um, so that's about the, uh, yeah, an algorithm. Uh, that's uh, something about the um, um, algorithm. Uh, and, and then uh, also quite interesting, there's uh, this uh, algorithm, this uh, parameter, sorry, uh, for uh, local time stepping. So in, um, in SASOL, uh, each cell can have uh, different uh, time steps. So the large cell have a larger uh, time step, but um, the time steps are grouped uh, by clusters. So that means that the smallest cell have a time step DT, then um, also have available are 2DT, 4DT, 8DT, so all of the power of two. So, um, and if we use that, we have to use a cluster LTS equal to. And then we have to define uh, the outputs. So, um, for instance, uh, all the output will be written in this folder output with this prefix, Northridge. Um, here in this block, um, you can see uh, the parameterization of the volume output. And um, so at which interval do we output the volume and uh, which refinements we, we, we use. So I will explain that later. But uh, for this setup, we disable um, volume output because this generates some large file and so we have a limited space on, on the cluster. So we uh, only output uh, um, the wave field at the surface. So with this uh, surface output parameters. So we enable the surface output at a time interval of one second. And then um, we use, um, so this refinement parameters means that um, if it's equal to zero, we will output one triangle by a mesh cell. But uh, with SASOL, we have, um, um, we, we have uh, sub-cell um, information. Um, so then uh, we can also um, uh, generate more output from, for one cell. So if you put a surface output refinement equal one, then each mesh cell will be subdivided into four cells like that. And uh, if you put uh, two, then each sub-cell will um, be also uh, subdivided into four cells. So then there's even more uh, special uh, discretization. Um, 
then we uh, have some parameters to define uh, the ASCII receiver. So if, if we want to generate some um, some seismograms, um, so we will um, we link to this uh, this uh, ASCII file. So we have six, six uh, points with a sampling rate of uh, five milliseconds, and uh, we in this uh, nameless about criteria we define the um, the final time of the simulation. So the say so will run uh, for ten seconds and then uh, stop. Okay, and the off fault uh, receiver file is just an ASCII file with the coordinate of each um, each receiver in it. So nothing complicated. Uh, usually, in, in yeah, in SaySol we you use a convention of uh, Z positive. So actually, this is only important for a dynamic rupture because you need to have some referential to to define the strike and the dip uh, coordinates in the fault output. Um, so the source is described in the standard uh, rupture format. Um, so this is a a uh, format which has been uh, proposed by uh, SCAC, um, so the Source California Earthquake Center. And um, in, in this uh, ASCII file format, we store the momentum source source. Uh, uh, so it's restricted to double cobol and also the source time function. Um, so here there's a link to the specification file. But basically, um, this file is uh, made of blocks, so each block would describe one point source. And in this block, you will get uh, the coordinates of this point source, uh, the faulting mechanism, um, the area of the point source, the initiation time of the point source, time step, and uh, the uh, slip rate um, time history. Okay, so um, now what, what we will do is uh, we will uh, split into a breakout room. So we'll try to um, process this uh, uh, um, source file into a file that can be read by SaySol. And then uh, we will uh, um, try to connect to the cluster, run um, SaySol, and then analyze the outputs. Okay, before we do that, are there I see there's some um, some questions still going on in the chat about Docker, but um, are there any questions about running um, a simulation using a kinematic source? Any of these things that were just covered? Is it, because this is what we will do now. Okay, then I suggest um, we split up. So we will have six breakout rooms. And the goal is to spend 45 minutes getting everything up and running, um, submitting your kinematic earthquake model. And um, you will also look at some output together and hopefully fix um, Docker problems. Mm. Should we, um, I have a, I have a, I have, I don't know if um, should people with Docker problems some um, maybe stay a little bit in the main room with Carson. What do you think? Because otherwise, um, we might have Docker problems in each breakout room. At one I think that's a good idea. So the people that have Docker problems that just don't click on the button to enter the breakout room, they just stay in the main session. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I create the rules. Yeah. An empty hmm? room, no? There would be a room without the instructors and it is. Yeah, we just make five. We just make five tomorrow. I think. Okay. Okay, five possible. breakout rooms. Uh, we assign yes. people automatically, and instructors, please uh, distribute yourself across the rooms. Okay, perfect. Um, because you will yeah. be assigned as well. Yeah, and we um, those that have the Docker problem stay in there. Yeah. So everybody press okay. the button to join the room, uh, with the exception of the people with uh, Docker problems. And instructors can then move from one room to the other, okay. if necessary. So 
there's still many participants here in the main room. Are they all having problems with the Docker or? Uh, Jose? Yes. Uh, uh, okay. No, Just, uh, Taufik, you can go. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jose, uh, I, I was in the same ro uh, breakout room with Duo, so please assign me to another um, You are co-host, so if you go to breakout room and you put your mouse, at, um, okay. open the breakout room menu and then there is room. Next no, to it is a, is a number with the participants and put the mouse above that and you can say join this room. You mean a breakout room? Uh, yes, but I can do this also manually. Uh, so in which room do you want to go? Um, uh, I was in the room number five. So other than room number five. I don't... Um, uh, I think you have to go back into the room, otherwise I cannot, you cannot assign you to another one. Okay, I join uh, back to room five. Uh, yes, please. Uh, so you can also ask with us directly questions. So um, to to Sonia, so you have could you please post your the exact command that you that you used? Carsten? Yes. So um, the setup from page eleven on the slides that worked with the version, so that worked uh, fine. When I try to run now the command which I posted in the chat, um, it didn't work. So that's on on Windows and PowerShell. Windows right? PowerShell exactly. Uh, yeah, could you could you maybe um, also try the, the the alternative so that you directly give the path? So with uh, this, what you suggested to Daniela. To Daniela, yeah. Okay, I'll try that. And um, Carsten, um, I have the impression there's one instructor uh, less. Is there another instructor here in the main room at the moment, or are you the only one? Uh, just to fix, you know, trying to get, <laughs> but otherwise I'm the only one. Uh, okay, uh, Tofik, <laughs> what happened? It was already Thomas there. Uh, so then I put you in room number one. Okay. Okay, so you have to go back again, and then I put you in room number one, sorry. Sure. Uh, Carsten, if I try to run it like this, I get a lot of output for Gmesh related. Oh yeah, then it's fine. Then it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so this is uh, so if you see a lot of output, so Gmesh, how to use it, blah blah blah, then this is fine. Okay, oh, okay, perfect. And then just to let you know, it worked with the alternative command for me as well. So I will leave now to the breakout session. Okay, great. Uh, so Sonia, there's a there's a space missing um, between the the shared and and up of C. So uh, I write it in the chat. So you need to there's uh, just the space missing. Okay, okay, I'll try it. Who's it? Uh, uh, so the the alternative command. So David yep. asked, asked that. Um, so so if this if this dollar pwd stuff does not work, you can also try to directly set the path. So um, I, I post an, another example again. Um, so this is an example I created for Daniela, but but uh, you could also just put your your own path there. So uh, slash. Uh, uh. Now it gives me gives me a lot of com of it says that Gamesh and then lots of alternatives. Yeah, then it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Can I can I interrupt a second, uh, Tofik? Yeah. Uh, one, two, and five is already ha uh, has uh, instructor. You can also switch the breakout rooms by yourself. Um, so you should be able to, and then just click on join breakout room, and you should be able to find 
I, I think I will put you in room number three because Aniko, I think she said she wanted to have a second one there. This number six? Uh, okay. Three. So. Okay, I will just. Uh, David, you're also missing a space. Um, so you put, uh, um, you have slash shared and then you have slash opov C and you should actually put a, a, a space between between slash and opov C. So that's the issue. So uh, you have kind of written, I, I write it in the chat. So that's what you have written and you should actually have a space there. Um, so David, could you could you try the command I put put into chat? Yes, David, now it's fine. Okay, okay, thanks you, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um. That file, we should put it in the uh, working directory, the unzip one, on the next slide, that's the 14. Yeah, just, just put it in the working directory. Uh, okay, um, so hi, uh, Silik Bet, so how, how do you pronounce that, your name? 
It's just better. Ah, okay, better. Yeah. Uh, so there's a we we had this error before. So most of you um, missed kind of a space between uh, between shared and and C. So that was usually the error that others had. So you I, I write it into chat. So you have something like this, and actually there should be a there should be a space here. And uh, if it's I think I use that. Um... So I'm checking again. Yeah, I use that the one space, right? So, so maybe could you just put uh, share your the, the the complete command that you use? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, there's this. There's actually the space missing. So which I which I put in the chat. Between the shared. Yeah, between shared and up of C. So we, be, between the yeah, there should be a should be a space. Okay. Now yeah. Mm. And I think you also have to you have to add the the drive name in front. So I think what you need is uh, just type it. Yeah, so I think this should be the this should be the command. Uh, for that file, so we need to unzip it, and then we need to go inside the file and uh, run the command on the page number fourteen. Um. Yeah, I'll just let me just open the slides, so that I know what you. Which slide are you referring to? Okay, um, so you are on Windows, right? So you don't, uh, yeah. So so there's you 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 can't use this training.sh script, unfortunately. Um, so you should just use the the so um, you just use the, the the long command with Docker run, blah blah blah, and then comes gmesh, um, and you can just um, just replace uh, gmesh then by the by the uh, by by the other commands that come during the training. Um, so I think for now you can move on to the um, to the next steps. I again, so I tried the, your command, but the problem is that the, if I use this, it says um, um, the pathway for my working directory is not shared from the host and it's not known to Docker. So maybe I couldn't use the name of the current directory, just I should direct the um, shared one. What I uh, mean? Didn't you did you get a did you like get to get a small pop up on Windows which uh, which asks you whether you want to share the directory? No, no. But um, for example, if I um, I'm just copying that. Um, um, yes. So this was an error if I used what you wrote in the chat. Okay. Um, but if I use uh, um, this one, and it just shows you information about the geometry mesh and etc. Ah, you are you are on Mac. Okay, I thought you were on yeah. Windows. Sorry. 
Yeah, then you don't. So the C is wrong. The, the C is for Windows. I thought you were on Windows. Oh, OK. So, yeah. Okay, no. so, I use so my... if the, yeah, if your command works, then that's fine. Then you just go ahead. OK. But, but I actually think you need you need uh, backslashes, so not the. And I think you should also be able to use the so the this command here. Um, so actually, the, you could you, are, you on Mac you should be able to use this training.sh file, which I provided in the um, in, in the zip that you had to download. So you can use that on Mac. So I would recommend that if you are on Mac. Okay. So this is the next step, right? Training s training dot sh. Yeah, that you can use that on Mac. Okay. Okay, is there anything anything else someone needs? Otherwise I would just join another join a breakout room and help out there. Okay, how do I join the breakout room now? Ah okay, uh, do you see that button join breakout room? Yeah, on... just should I click just yeah, yeah, just click it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Welcome back. Hello. Hello, Amin. Everybody okay, so, is back. Okay, super. So Taufik is Taufik's turn now to give us a Paraview tour. And um, I just I hope everybody had some jobs running. And maybe I think from chatting to the other trainers, our group was the slowest. <laughs> but um, um, maybe you, you've seen what the, the output that was produced, and some of you already looked at it. So it's, um, it's a very practical kind of output because it's only the light bait slice of the wave field output only at the free surface. And now um, Taufik is taking over Alicia, explaining how to. No, I'm not muted. Oh, I can hear you. Yeah. So we can hear you, yes. I can hear you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, I anyway, just his talk to introduce Taufik. And uh, he will now, after copying the files, and you've seen there's two kind of files, a short version that you just computed, hopefully, and a long version for 10 seconds. And um, yeah, you use Paraview like yesterday to make a very simple shake map. Uh, Taufik. Yeah. Thank you, Alice. 
this. Uh, I will share screen. Um, okay, this is what we did. Uh, okay, it's not done. <laughs> okay, um, make sure you now you open. You can open the, your Paraview that you already installed. Uh, we here we use the Paraview 5.8.1, that um, that latest one. Uh, to open the uh, to open your output folder, uh, output uh, output file, you can click this icon, uh, open, or use the file, then open. Then this uh, will uh, this window will pop up, and make sure you choose the XDMF file, uh, the uh, the file with XDMF extension. If you open the others, uh, it won't work. So here, like uh, Alice mentioned before, uh, the one that we output here is this, like there are six test receiver. It means that uh, this uh, is re receiver, uh, receiver points that located in the surface. Uh, today we don't uh, will uh, focus on the 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 surface output. So here we only output the surface. But uh, because we only um, uh, activate the surface output um, later in the in the parameter file uh, parameter dot par, you can always check uh, you can always uh, change the output uh, like adding like also the wave field output uh, and fault output. Select the test surface and click OK here, and make sure you choose the XDMF reader. If you choose the other, uh, in same in the same ca uh, some some cases uh, it will crash, and you have to open again your your part of you. Then if you do, if done so, you can click and then click OK. Then don't forget to play, uh, press apply here. Then this uh, will come up. Uh, here you see the. Okay, like in, in previous slide, you see here the eye is not open. Here the eye is open. It means that uh, it's uh, the one that is shown here is uh, is the test surface the text DMF. If you have an, a, 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 another file, um, you can always check if this eye is open or not. Then you can uh, select the attribute here. You see the partition. And you can see here, if you click, you will see a uh, big U, uh, V and W. It's, uh, it's meant it's dis displacement. And a uh, small U, V and W, it means velocity. Here, you can, uh, we can try with W. It means that the uh, U, V, W, it's, it means that uh, X, uh, velocity in X, Y, Z direction. Later, uh, if you don't, if you don't uh, W, later it will. Uh, you have to move the, your uh, the time to the last time step because if uh, there's nothing uh, recorded uh, shown in the in the initial time step zero, then if you don't so, it's um, sometimes. Um, it is shown like this. It means that if you see the scale bar, it, um, it's, it's shown zero, 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 zero. It means that your data scale is too small. You need to rescale the data range. You can do this by um, clicking this. Uh, it's automatically rescaled to data range. Or you can also rescale to custom data range. Like for example, here, if you, uh, you click this with the C, the custom, then you can put like minus 0 0.3 to 0 0.3 and click to scale. Then it's shown different. So, but you can see here the scale bar now have a minus 0 0.3 to 0 0.3, which is nice. Um, then you, uh, it's also useful uh, in your 
uh, when do, uh, doing visualizations. Um, sometimes you want to see, okay, you want to see the your your elements, uh, edge. Then you can select surface with edge. Then it's shown like this. Uh, you will see that uh, we have finer uh, elements uh, in vicinity of your if our uh, of our fold. Then um, later it will be explained in, in the next example. But here, this is the the the, the advantage of using SISO that we can do coarsening here. Then uh, what we want to do is uh, to try to use a calculator by clicking this calculator uh, icon. We want to compute the velocity uh, geometrical mean of the velocity by, uh, okay, you uh, click the calculator and then don't forget to put your, your, your the, the name of your variable. Uh, for example, here I use the geo mean and then square root of uh, u uh, multiplied by v. It means that uh, we only took the horizontal uh, velocity. Then if you click apply, then it will automatically compute and generate the, the new uh, attribute named geo mean. Next, we want to apply a filter. Here, um, I suggest you to, uh, to use a temporal statistic by clicking the filter and then alphabetical and temporal statistic. You could also, uh, also use the search button, uh, command here, search, and then type, if you already know that your name, uh, the, the, your, your filter name, you can also uh, do search and type temporal statistic and it will come up. Then if you click that, then uh, you will have this uh, windows, then you can click yes. It, uh, this temporal statistic means uh, uh, the filter will process all time steps, which is, uh, and it takes uh, some time to process. And you click yes. And then uh, we select, uh, on. Uh, we interested in, in the maximum uh, value, then uh, we select the compute maximum. You can also do minimum and average for later purpose. But uh, in this purpose, we use the compute maximum and then apply. Then it will generate a simple shake map. Uh, it's basically taking uh, the maximum value of the geometrical mean for all time step. And it's, uh, it's basically a simple peak ground velocity, which is uh, quite useful uh, for, for, uh, for dynamic capturing. I think this is all uh, the, uh, the, the, the last slide of the parafield uh, for the excess wine. Of course, we can do much, much uh, um, uh, uh, visualization, but you can play around later. Um, okay, now I think I can pass it to Duo. No, no, no. Okay. Now, first, you, first, you want to see if everybody looked at it. Okay. See if there's questions. Um, is everyone has having trouble with uh, uh, Parfum? So, on that last step, when I run the temporal statistics on both the short and the long outputs, yes, all it does is bring up kind of a kind of beigey gray thing. It doesn't actually show. You mean this one? Like the last slide, yeah. Well, I don't know. Once you apply the compute maximum, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I have the same problem. <laughs> no. I think you have to change it from solid to geo mean maximum. I mean the coloring in the properties I... tab. Yeah, can you check uh, in the, the attributes here? Yeah, the geo mean maximum, yeah, thanks. Yes, yeah. It's a very simple, uh, uh, it's just a very simple filter. Um, you can always have, um, there are a lot of uh, filter available in the part view. You can always combine and create something else. Yeah. 
we will have another profile uh, exercise later in the exercise two, which also combine the like the fault output and then the three D output. So we can play around uh, much better later. I want, just want to make sure that everybody caught what Taufik explained about um, the filter. This is something useful in PowerView for quick post-processing. Yeah. It was um, a, bit, a bit fast, I think. This one? Mm -hmm. I can come back. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Here we choose the temporal statistic. Um, so the temporal statistics works like um, it because we are uh, we apply this filter to the uh, the computed uh, geo mean. So this geo mean compute for uh, every time step. Uh, no, uh, it's uh, for this uh, specific uh, step. But then we uh, with the temporal statistic, we took uh, we take the maximum value of uh, from all computed uh, geomean. So that's why we uh, choose the compute maximum from all the available time step. For example, from zero until 10, we have uh, 10 time step here. We took the maximum value of the geomean um, from all this all the time step. Okay, so at this point, I would like to have from other participants that they're ready to go to the dynamic rupture examples. A quick um, yes. And if you have any other question about kinematic source examples, then um, please put a no so we can we know where we stand. Because now we would continue um, with more um, with the dynamic rupture modeling. So really solving for spontaneous earthquake rupture coupled to seismic wave propagation the next two examples. So let's see. We have 16 yes, one no so far. 17 yes, 19 yes. Okay. Um, the no is from yes, yes, yes. Okay, 31 yes, 33, okay. <laughs> All right, so then um, we will continue with the next topic, and that is how to produce a dynamic rupture of quick simulation. And we have two examples, um, a simple and um, more complex one, and Duo is the one that is taking over at this point. So uh, do we need a break before or we start from now? No, I think we should continue, and then maybe we, we will have a, a, um, a break during the breakout session. Like people that are finished or that need a break, they should can just do that in the breakout session. Okay, then I will start to share my screen. Okay, I will stop stop share first. Yeah. Okay, can you all see my slides? Yes. Okay, thanks. Um, so in the, the second part will be uh, dynamic rupture modeling. Um, in the, okay. So in the first uh, example, I will show you the dynamic rupture from uh, SCAG benchmark center. The model have a single planar fault surface and a simple, relatively simple uh, setup. So, so it is really suitable for beginners to start off. Here is, um, uh, okay, so the, uh, um, I will summarize the uh, SCAG benchmark. So we have a 60, uh, 60 degree dipping uh, normal fault, and it's uh, 30 kilometer long and uh, uh, 15 kilometer wide. So the nucleation is in the center, um, down deep on the fault. Mm. This example, uh, this benchmark is a homogeneous half space, and uh, it consider all fault plasticity when the elastic limit is reached. We use a linear slip weakening to control the dyna dynamics on the fault, and the initial stress condition is depth dependent. 
um, the nucleation is achieved by a pre-described uh, nucleation patch, and the initial condition have strong um, super share in the results. So first, uh, we will build a mesh uh, for this uh, dynamic simulation with uh, the free uh, the free software called the G Mesh. Um, so this is an input file for the G Mesh called dot geo. Mm, uh, I will explain uh, this uh, geo file. Uh, step by step to help you easy to understand the structure of the geo file. So first we um, define some um, important geometry in the fault. For example, the fault uh, length, the fault width and the dipping angle. And we also uh, uh, we also uh, define the mesh discretization here. Um, and we need to build a volume around the fault. Normally it's three or four times uh, larger than the fault dimension. Okay, so the structure of G mesh is like, you need to build from points to lines to surface and to volume. So here let's begin to create uh, points. So the, the command in the G mesh language is really simple. So um, you should be able to understand it very easily. So first I, be, I create four points on the surface and uh, uh, connect a neighboring, uh, connect the two neighbor points, I will make some line. These lines can make a, a clockwise loop and then I will uh, make a surface from this loop. So with a similar uh, method, we can create the fault, uh, the fault surface, uh, which is shown here. And uh, we can also create uh, a, the nucleation patch around the fault. So the loop around the nucleation and the loop around the fault will give you the fault surface together. Um, we give we um, we need to um, define the identification for each uh, surface that has been created in this uh, geo file. For example, we use an arbitrary number file for the for each. Uh, surface. So, yeah. Sorry. Now, Excuse me? Yes. One question. So, when you define your points, you have four parameters there. there. So, the th first three are x, y, z coordinates. And then you have some sort of, for example, here for this point 200 is lc underscore nucl. Is that some sort of label yeah. or what's the function? Uh, it's a good question. Yeah, that is a uh, um, fault discretization here. Ah, okay. So yes, sir. I, I assign the maximum mesh in the domain, which is 22 kilometer. And on the fault, I want to refine the mesh. So it's uh, 700, uh, 750 meter. So yeah, so the, yeah, it's a good question. So the, the full column in the points will be X, Y, Z and the resolution or the mesh size that you want. Mm, okay, yeah, is there? So, uh, so when you have the uh, surface uh, ready, so the next step is to define the boundary condition uh, that will be uh, used in SESO. So SESO identifies three types of uh, boundary conditions, the free surface, uh, the fault boundary, which will have the dynamic rupture and the absorb absorbing um, boundaries. So the, 101, 103, and 105 is fixed uh, for say so. Um, so now, yeah, you have the, so now I, uh, this is the basic structure for the uh, geo file. Uh, is there any other questions for, for the mesh file? Excuse me, I have one question. The absorbing boundary is uh, for the fault, not for the domain, no? The absorbing foundry is for the domain. Okay. okay. Yeah. So the the, uh, the, the fault boundary um, will be a, a fault surface and the free surface is on the top of the domain and the other five surface 
around the domain will be observing for, uh, boundaries. Yeah, it's a good question. Is there any <laughs> other questions? Um, if no, then I'll move on to the next parameter. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, I forgot the, the last part will be um, like design the mesh size. So this is um, uh, pretty, uh, uh, a little bit difficult than the uh, uniform mesh size we use. So we can uh, assign a cousin away from the fault use the module called the field in GMesh. Uh, so first we can design a field called distance. It means like it will return the distance to a surface that you want to uh, refine. This will be our fault surface. And the next um, uh, module is called the uh, uh, mass evil. It's, uh, it's, uh, you can assign, um, for example, here, I. Uh, design um, second order polynomial function, um, which is based on the distance to the fault surface. So it will um, like uh, cause the fault, cause the mesh size from away as it away from the fault surface. Um, for the detail of this, um, uh, for of this mesh causing, uh, you can read more details in a uh, GMesh tutorial or visit our CISO documentation. Mm, yeah, that's it. So the next part will be the parameters for uh, this example. Um, as in the last uh, section, Thomas has already showed the, a lot of stuff in the par uh, parameters. So here I will just highlight the, the difference in, in this example. As we use, um, uh, of fault plasticity. So we add two extra uh, variables in the, at the beginning of the parameter file to tell CISO that now we start uh, to use plasticity. And uh, there is um, another parameter, viscoplastic relaxation time you need to give. And uh, as now we use um, dynamic fault boundary conditions, so we need to turn, um, turn on the boundary condition here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we use um, the, in the material uh, parameter, the YAML file is the same as Thomas introduced uh, um, in the first section. So here we use uh, the easy uh, map to assign the elastic and the plastic parameter. And as I showed, uh, this benchmark use a, a depth dependent initial stress condition. So here is how is um, uh, um, uh, three <clears throat> principal stress, sigma one, sigma two, sigma three, uh, will change with depth. So this is a function. And you can see use this uh, several lines in this YAML file, we can easily, um, uh, easily assign the uh, initial stress for the uh, example. Uh, so for the um, so for example, the uh, maximum compression stress sigma one is um, a depth dependence. So which will uh, like like here have the format here. So for the detail of this uh, YAML file, uh, you can. Of read our Google Doc here as the link shows. And uh, another uh, difference is that we use a uh, friction law in this uh, dynamic rupture. So now we choose uh, linear, slip uh, linear slip weakening friction, which is uh, FL2. And uh, we also need to um, assign the parameters related to the friction in another YAML file called the uh, fault.yaml. Okay, the nucleation is related with a, a static friction coefficient. So in this benchmark, 
we uh, in the nucleation, we assign a smaller uh, static friction and outside is a normal uh, static friction coefficient. So it, so it will uh, spontaneously nucleate in the nucleation uh, zone for this example. So, okay. Um, and uh, we are interested in the um, physics on the fault. For example, the traction, the velocity, uh, the rupture velocity, the slip rate. So here with this um, output mask, we can customize which variables we want to output and which uh, variables we don't need. So this one means we, up, we output, zero means we don't output. And for the uh, position of each number, it uh, represents the different uh, variables here. Um, so I, I will not go into detail, but you can read it uh, uh, from our documentation. Mm. Okay, and uh, and then the the mesh fell. Uh, in the exercise later, we will do the we will, will create the mesh together, and the local time stepping is the same as um, um, in the first example. Okay, and uh, which um, changed the name for the output, and in this uh, exercise we run for just uh, four seconds to save time. Um, yeah, that's all for my introduction. Is there any question for the, the mesh or the input parameter? If, if there is no question, then we will go back to breakout room uh, to do the exercise as in groups. My colleagues and I will help you to um, do the exercise. And we will do the uh, power view to visualize the results uh, in the breakout room as well for this exercise. Do you want to keep the same breakout rooms as earlier or do you want to change the number? No, it can be the same. Okay. Um, so there's a couple of detailed slides, um, how uh, just different power view tips and tricks or what, uh, what you can use to visualize the results. There's something um, about choosing the color scale, how to add a time annotation and how to do a clip so you can actually see the fault. And um, I suggest you you're trying that maybe over the lunch break um, if you run, because we really want to get to the, to the Palo earthquake in our last 30 minutes um, and then ask anywhere in Slack or email or chat or whatever, if, if there's uh, problems with that, but it's more, um, it's more like a para view introduction, how to like make nice visualization, have a time annotation when you do a video and these kind of things. Mm. More importantly, were there any problems in running the job? Was everybody able to submit TPV 13? That yes. are more important than Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes. I see yeah, that. I think some some have submit, but they are waiting. I, I yeah, I, yeah, I don't know if the, the cluster will work uh, like normally <laughs> to finish it because normally it should take just seven minutes. Okay. Yeah, we let's go back and then and then we we planned another little breakout and then we can check if the job's finished or not in the next breakout room for everybody. But it would be important, I think, to have your own setup run. Okay, so the, la the last example, and um, we are scheduled to finish at 12. <laughs> so we have, um, again, a little introduction that Aniko will do, and then we have a last breakout. <clears throat> and we should meet here back in the main room, 10 minutes to 12 to wrap up. Okay, and so the third example will be the Palo Solavesi earthquake. Um, probably you have heard about it. So 2018, there happened an earthquake in Indonesia on the Sulawesi Island that you can see here. 
So this island, as you can see, there is a very complex tectonic setting. So this earthquake was due to tectonic loading. Here we have a closer zoom to the fault system. We have a strike slip fault system with very shallow depth where the earthquake occurred. Um, and this earthquake was followed by a huge tsunami, which was very unexpected because normally in strike slip fault systems, we would not expect a tsunami, maybe only for subduction zones. So here you can see again this fault system and the main event, the first the upper event, the 7.5 event was followed later on by two <clears throat> smaller events by here a 5.3 and a 6.3 event. And those events provide us constraints on the dip angles of the individual fault segments that you can see here at the right hand side. So from this information from those earthquakes, you can then um, create a complex 3D fault system, as you can see it here at the right hand side with different dip angles. So a northern segment with a dip of 65 degree, a palo segment with a dip of 65 degree as well, and then here as a Luki segment with a dip of 90 degree. <clears throat> Again, we will have a parameter set up. So we will have our parameter file and several dependent YAML files. In this case, we will have a fault YAML file, which constrains the fault geometry, an initial stress YAML file, which contains the initial stresses in 3D. Then we have a material 3D YAML file, which has all the initial stresses and LAMI parameters in there that we will need for our dynamic rupture simulation. And then we have the nucleation stress YAML file, um, which describes a forced nucleation within a predefined patch. So we will go through with the parameter file again, but very fast due to the lack of time and also um, not that much changed from the last parameter file. So of course here we changed the name for the material file. So we have Sulawesi material 3D YAML file. The plasticity is turned on. So we have off for plasticity. Then our friction law is 100, which means that we have a rate and state friction law. This means that we have a nonlinear relation between the fault stress and the slip. Then our model file name is Zula Visi fault YAML. And here we define some rate and state parameters where we will not go into detail right now. Then here, we have the moment rate output turned on. So afterwards we can look at the moment rate of the earthquake um, and the output type is an ASCII file. Um, we can see here that our time interval output will be 0.4 um, and we will place some fault receivers on the fault. Then our mesh file in this case, we will not create the mesh. The mesh is already created with PAML and it is inside the folder where you will run it. And it is the Sulawesi 65 dip straight A, short north micro mesh file. Um, we use local time stepping again. And the output will be written to output Sulawesi. Then what is interesting is that we will place off fault receivers. So we will not only have receivers on the fault, but we will also place them spread it around the fault. And we have 33 receivers um, and the receivers, the record points so the points where the receivers stand are in this dot file GPS filtered projection dot. So the sampling of each receiver is 0.01. So this will be the sampling of the seismograms afterwards. And here you can see the 3D material properties. So this here would be the S wave velocity that we use as an input for our model domain. So you can see here the model domain um, and our fault system within this velocity range. And you can see that we have varying velocity from east, west and north to south and depth. So that's it, hands on again, I would say. And I don't know, Alice, will we go to breakout rooms again? Yes, so we will go again to breakout rooms. And within the breakout rooms, we will run our example and then look at the output.